today's episode, I have two finished objects, two works in progress, and lastly, I have a project I've been working on that is not knitting related, but I think that it complements my fall knitting perfectly. Welcome back to Knitting by the Bay. My name is Christy and this is my making podcast where I talk mostly about knitting but also some other fun crafts that I might be into at the moment. Today's episode will be a regular podcast where I'm going to share with you some of my finished objects, my works in progress, and also a fun little needle felted project that I just completed. So my first finished object is the one that I'm wearing and this is the Autumn Alpine by Caitlin Hunter or Boyland Knitworks. I knit this one using Durerum Natura Ulysse in the color Lagon and Poudre Blanc. And this sweater is knit on US 4 or 3.5 millimeter needles. And I will stand up and let you see how it looks. This one I knit a little bit more cropped than I normally do, but I really like that with this color work yoke and everything. And I don't know, something about this color made me think I wanted it to be more of a cropped sweater. And yeah, I really enjoyed knitting this. The color work motif in this is so much fun. I uh, did a few modifications to the pattern. So I talked about this on my last episode, but she has a very beautiful color, um, different kind of ribbing and some color work in the collar and the cuffs and the hem. And I decided just to forego that because I thought that this was already enough. It was special enough that it didn't really need that extra detail for me. I have seen a lot of projects that I, I really liked that detail on theirs, but for mine, I just didn't want to, didn't want to do that. So I just did a plain one by one rib. And I really like the sleeves on this because, you know, they're, they're a bit wider than I normally do. And then you just you knit them all the same width until the cuffs, and then you do a rapid decrease there so it sort of balloons out a little bit I'm not sure if this is what's called a bishop sleeve or if it's not as it's not super puffy out there but it uh, does come in a little bit I really like that detail I think they're really cute so yeah I loved loved making this totally recommend this pattern if you're interested in making something I thought it it's not super fall ish but I think it's It'll be really nice to wear um, all through the season and wear in the spring as well. So that is my autumn alpine. So my second finished object is the I Ain't Afraid of No Ghost socks by Stone Knits. And I knit these using Lang Dual in the colors orange and black and Barocco Vintage Sock for the color white for the ghost. And I talked about these socks on my last episode because I was having a lot of trouble. This is my first sock. I had a lot of trouble with knitting this, knitting the color work in the round in such a small circumference. There's a lot of um, puckering going on. There's a ridge that runs down the side of the sock from when I was doing Magic Loop. So I was asking you guys if you had any tips or tricks and I received a ton of comments about it. Art knitters, awesome in this knitting community, always ready to like help and give tips and, and tricks and stuff to help other knitters along the way. So I think that that's really amazing. Um, so some, I wanted to share with you some of the tips that I received in the comments and maybe it can help you if you are a beginner, n beginner knitter or trying your first pair of color work socks. So the first thing, but the, one of the tips that I received was to knit your sock inside out. So basically, it's, it's really easier. Just, you just hold it so that you just sort of flip it so that it's the inside that is facing you instead of the outside facing you. And what that does is it allows the float, it will travel along around the outside circumference. So it'll effectively stretch that yarn out so that your float is not too tight. I don't know if that makes sense, but that was a really great tip and I did do that and that worked really well. My next tip that I got was to use nine inch circular needles. And because I always like to buy new craft tools, I did order a pair of these Chiagu, um, 
sorry about the glare. Anyway, they are nine inch circulars and they are tiny. <laughs> That's them. That's it. So yeah, I ordered this. I ordered this one for just the color work portion. So I ordered a size up from the ribbing and the tone toe in the heel um, to do the color work portion of the socks. And so yeah, I used those. I thought that because they're so the tips of the needles are so tiny, it's hard to use. And I thought that my hands might cramp up from this, but they actually didn't. And it was it did take some time to get used to it. And it was pretty funny because I was knitting with these tiny little ones and then I switched over uh, to work on a different project, which I think are, what are these? These are US 2 and my other project is US 8, I believe. So it was very weird, a very weird feeling after knitting on these and then going to the US 8 needles. But yeah, I got used to it. So I think that, oh, and then the last tip that I received was to catch your floats every four or five stitches which I normally do if I'm knitting a sweater or something like that. But this was my first time doing color work socks. And in the pattern, she says to catch your floats every nine stitches or something like that. So yeah, that was sort of a little different for me, but I thought I'll just go with what she says in the pattern. But it ended up being, the floats are way too long in my opinion. And they do catch on your toes when you're trying to put your put them on your feet. And so I don't really, I wouldn't really, I would never do that again, the nine, nine stitches. I normally do every four to five stitches and I think that that works great. So this was my first one. This is my second one. And I haven't woven in all the ends yet, but I don't, you probably can't see on the camera. It probably doesn't do a very good job of showing you but this one is a lot a lot there's not a lot of puckering in it there's no ridge there because i wasn't doing the magic loop it was just on circular so there's no weird ridge from from changing the needles and yeah i think it worked out really well it was a lot more fun a lot less it seemed to go by a lot quicker too because you weren't um, adjusting with the magic loop to go to the other needle, you were just knitting around and around. So every, every round seemed to go a lot faster. So I thought that that was really great. And I definitely will continue to use the nine inch circulars when I do some more color work socks. I don't have anything lined up yet, but I have had my eye on a few. I would like to make some for my sister, I think, uh, a couple of pairs of different color work socks. Um, another thing is when you're catching your floats every nine stitches, to me, it looks quite messy on the inside. And I, for me, I wouldn't want to give that as a gift. I think, you know, if she's, if my sister received them and she's trying to put them on her feet and her toe catches on the inside, I don't think she would like that very much. So yeah, I think that that is definitely better the four to five stitches to catch your floats. So that is all I have to say about my I Ain't Afraid of No Ghosts. I need to weave in the ends now, and then I'm going to give these to my son. So those are my two finished objects, and up next, I'd like to share with you some of my works in progress.
So I'm really excited about my next work in progress because it's a sweater that I chose to knit for sort of the holiday season. So I know it's a little bit early, it's only mid-October right now, but it's gonna probably take me about a month to finish it, maybe three weeks or something to finish it. So I wanted to have it ready for November so I can wear it for the holidays. So the next one is called Fallow, Fallow, Fallow. And this one is by Anne Michelle Phelan or Felon. And I will put a picture of that up on the screen. And it's an adorable color work yoke sweater with these deers and flower motifs. And I thought that this would be the perfect, it's not super Christmassy, but it's a nice holiday style sweater. So I will be knitting this one using Durerum Natura, again, in Durerum Natura Ulysse. And this is the color Cedar. And I will be doing the contrasting color work in this color Quartz. I don't know if it's showing up properly, but this is a very pale, dusty pink color. I was a little disappointed, to be honest, when this came in the mail because I thought that it might be a little bit brighter. It looks a little bit dirty, in my opinion. It's a little bit dark in spots, and you know, I knew it was going to be a dusty pink. But there's something about it, like the variegation in the yarn just sort of has a dirty tinge to it. Like it's been washed with something, like a, something black, and then it kind of rubbed off on this. But I do, I do still like it. I really love, my favorite combination of colors is green and pink. So I really like this combo together. And I am decided that for the deer color work, I was going to hold this quartz together with Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair, and this is the color Ballerina, which is a very pale, dusty pink again, but it's brighter than this one. So I'm hoping that when I put those together, then it's going to brighten up this quartz color, and I thought that that would look super cute. I've never done um, the color work holding mohair before. So the rest of the sweater, I'm not going to use any mohair. It's just going to be for the color work part. Um, I don't know how that's going to turn out, but it was kind of an experiment for me. Have you ever done that where you've put mohair just in the color work? If you have, let me know how it turned out. I'm very curious. So I think that that's going to be a lot of fun. So I will show you what I have done so far. So I've started on the collar. And I've done the short rows, and now I'm starting to increase um, increase the collar. So I'm really liking it. So in the pattern, it has a mock neck on it, and I don't really like the feeling of a mock neck. It looks like sort of a tighter mock neck. I like a looser cowl style or just a looser turtleneck but I don't really like the feeling of something tight on my neck so I decided just to do a crew neck and what I did was I used the stitch count for this one because I really like how this collar turned out I think it sits perfectly so I thought I'll just use the same the same part for the collar and do a one by one ribbing and then all I did after was um, change the rate of increases to match up with uh, the fallow sweater pattern increases here. When I was reading through some of the other knitters projects, there they were saying that there are some long floats in this color work chart, especially at the beginning, right before, like right when you're starting on the deers, there are some very long floats there. And some people had suggested using the ladder back jacquard method of catching your floats, which I've never done before. But people who had not done that technique, who had just caught their floats in between the motifs, they could see the contrasting yarn poking through. So I thought this is a good time to learn another new technique. So I'm going to be trying that out, which I think 
I looked it up, I read a little bit about it, and it says like it's you basically turn the floats into columns of stitches or ladders on the other side. So I don't know. I, have you tried that kind of technique? Is that something that you normally use in your color work? Do you just normally use it for longer floats? I don't know. Um, you can put that in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your opinion on that. So anyway, that's going to be a, a fun little thing to uh, learn something new. I should also say that I'm the suggested needle size for this sweater is US 5. And I when I did my gauge swatch, my my swatch was too big. So I've gone down to a US 4 to knit this sweater. And it's the same needle size that I use to knit this one as well as my forager, which I knit using the same Durerum Natura Ulysses. So I think that that will be good. That got that got the right gauge. So yeah, that is all I have to say about my fallow sweater. My second work in progress is my muscle bro, which is by Zolda Teague. And this one I'm using the Sirdar Jewel Spun in the color Turquoise Sky. And this is going to be a hat for my son. So this pattern is interesting because all you do, there's no gauge swatch or anything, and it's supposed to be, you're supposed to be able to use pretty much any size needle. And what you do is you just start at the top here and you start using, she gives you some different options of how to cast on. I decided to do Emily Auker's circular cast on, and I will link that down below the video that I use for that if you're interested in, in that um, cast on. So then you just start knitting until you have, you knit and you do the increases for the top, the crown, and you do that until you have about one inch worth of fabric. And then you can measure in that one inch how many stitches you have in that inch. And that will tell you what size of hat that you're knitting and how many increases that you need to do to get the right size. So that was really interesting. I thought that was really cool. So I, yeah, I'll show you what I have so far. It's all bunched up because this, you know, needle is not that big. I, this is a worsted weight yarn and I'm using size US 8 needles to knit on this. So, so far, I'm not really sure. It's hard to tell because I can't stretch it out, but I don't know. It might be looking a little bit big, but I don't think that's really a problem because what you do is you knit, so you're going to knit it twice as long and then fold it over because it's doubled. So yeah, that's what I have so far. I really like this color. It's I think my son will really like this one. So that's everything I have on the go right now. And now I wanted to share with you the winner of my color work contest that I talked about on my last video. So I asked you guys which one of the color work patterns I talked about in my roundup was your favorite and to comment that down below and then that would enter you into the contest. Or you could also just let me know a different pattern that you are really wanting to knit. So I put all of the comments into a random comment picker and the winner of the contest is Whip Queen 715 So if this is you, then congratulations and thank you so much for entering the contest. And I will put my email address down below so you can send me an email and then I will arrange how to get that your favorite color work pattern to you. So yeah, thank you everybody who entered the contest. Now I wanted to talk about another project that I just finished, which is a fun little non knitting related project, but I think it kind of relates to knitting and you will see why. So I made these little needle felted acorn stitch markers and I'll show you I've got one already on my work in progress here so all I did was I when we were on a walk one day there were all these acorn tops on the ground so I just collected a few of those and I just drilled a little hole in the acorn top and and attached that little clasp to it and I made the little needle felted ball acorn part as well. 
So that was a lot of fun to do. I will link down below the shop on Etsy where I purchased this wool roving. I have, I purchased it in multiple colors that I've had for many years. And then I thought, you know, this would be a fun little project to do. So yeah, I will link that down below where I purchased the wool and where I purchased the little um, needles to do the needle felting. So I also, I purchased all of this. I have a, a lot of this wool roving because a few years ago, well, it's more than a few, about 10 years ago, I actually did a lot of needle felting back then and I made a lot of little characters. And so I decided back then that I would turn those characters into a book. So I wrote this little book here. It's called, sorry about the glare. It's called Woodland Rhymes and I self-published this. And it's just a book of nursery rhymes for, you know, babies or children. And then each little nursery rhyme has a needle felted character to go along with it. There's a little bunny. And this one is my favorite. This is a banjo playing fox. <laughs> Yeah, and so I wrote the poems and I made the little characters and turned it into a book that I published. And so if you don't mind, I wanted to read to you one of the poems for the book. It's very short, so don't worry, but <laughs> it's called The First Snow and it's about this little, little deer. So, once upon a winter's eve for buds of yellow birch, a little doe through fallen snow did wander out to search. What magic spell has happened here that came without a sound? An icy gust of fairy dust falls still upon the ground. What wonder for the woodland fawn to happen on this night? First winter's snow she'll ever know to fill her heart with light. Oh, yeah, that was a lot of fun to do. So I will link down below if you're interested. I have these little books on Amazon for sale. So if you're interested, I'll just put that down below and you can check it out. Well, that's it of my knitting and knitting related content for today. If you're only here for the knitting, that's okay. I will see you again next time. Um, but if you are interested, I have a couple of sewing projects that I'm interested in making that I'd like to talk to you about. And I wanted to share with you some of my new fabrics for those projects. So the first sewing project that I'm going to be making is called the Free Range Slacks and I'll put a picture up here. This is a pattern by Sew House 7 and I was trying to find a pair of pants that would be casual and sort of comfy pants. I wanted elastic waist. 
I kind of wanted them to taper at the ankles. So there was a few that I was looking into. I was thinking about making the bob pants because I know that Casey on Young Folk, Young Folk Knits makes those pants a lot. I think she's made multiple pairs of those pants. And I really think that they're a cute pant. I think that they're, um, they look like they're not too difficult to make. So I was kind of thinking between those and the free range slacks, but I decided on the free range slacks. So these are, I'm going to be making out of, grab my fabrics, this black twill, not very exciting, but I purchased this to make a pair of Burnside bibs, but I also had another um, twill fabric that I purchased from Blackbird Fabrics and they kind of both arrived at the same time. And this one, I ordered from Fabricville and it's a little bit thinner than the other one that I got from Blackbird Fabrics. Nothing wrong with that. It's just that I I thought the thicker one would be that's more what I wanted for the overall style pattern. Um, so I saved this one for something else. And yeah, I think that this is going to be the perfect fabric for these free range slacks. I made a mistake and I washed this. Yeah, you can see. I washed this with another fabric and all of that fabric just came off on this one. So I think I'll have to take something like a lint brush to get that off. Um, but anyway, yeah, I'm very excited to start on those. I already have like, this is just the extra fabric because I need less for these free range slacks than I did for the Burnside bibs. So I have a little bit left of this. I don't know what I'm going to make. I thought maybe a skirt, like a mini skirt type of thing would be really cute with something with like snaps down the front. So I might do that. But anyway, I have the pattern, the, the pieces all cut out and I'm ready to get sewing on it hopefully this weekend. So then I thought I really like this pattern for the free range slacks and I really like the fabric that I used for my butter coat that I talked about in my previous episode. So I decided to get some more of this fabric and yeah, I really love this. It's um, very soft on the inside. It's like a flannel fabric. So I thought that that would be really nice and cozy on the inside of these pants. So I'm going to, I think, get started on this. I'm going to make the ones in the twill first. And then if, if I like how they turn out, then I will cut out uh, the ones in the plaid. My second uh, sewing project that I'm going to be making is called Ileana. And this is by Vicky Sews. And this is a knit dress. So you need a knit fabric. And I thought that this would be really nice to wear underneath some longer cardigans that I hope to knit in the future. And yeah, I think that this is a really really nice pattern. So I bought the PDF pattern off of Etsy and I can link that down below as well. It says that the difficulty is a level two, so that should be pretty easy. It says it's suitable for beginners. So I'm gonna, gonna try that. The fabric that I got for this dress, I got two different fabrics because I hope to make two of them, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> the first one is just another black. This is a pont Pontaroma, which is a stretchy knit fabric. And I really like the thickness of this one. It's sort of a medium weight. It's not super, it's not a thin, super thin fabric. It's about, it's a medium weight. And I think that that will look really, really nice in that dress. I'm a little concerned about, not concerned, but I'm wondering a bit about the neckline, if it will be too, too deep or too open of a neckline. I do really like a V-neck or a scoop neck. So that's why I chose this one. It, but it does look quite deep, the V, but we'll see. I can always just adjust that in the pattern and make it come up a little bit more. So the second fabric that I purchased for that pattern, when it arrived, I wasn't thrilled about it. It's nice. It's good. It's a nice fabric. It's um, bamboo knit fabric. So it's really nice. And I do like the gray color 
and everything, but it's quite thin. So I didn't realize that that was, it was going to be that thin. So I'm not sure if I want to make that dress using this. I don't know if you guys have any other suggestions of patterns that are great for a bamboo knit. That's, you know, it's a bit thinner then I would love it. If you left me a comment down below, that would be great. Well, that's all I have to share with you today. I hope you were able to find some inspiration here. And if you enjoy videos like this one, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you won't miss out on any future content. I will see you again in a couple weeks with a very special winter themed pattern roundup. And until next time, happy crafting everyone. Bye.